three, two, one. My name is Nick. I'm a full-time trader and entrepreneur. We put out tons of stuff for free for traders. These are real trades. This is real money. I'm putting my money on the line. This is going to be a live trading video uh, here, locking in uh, over $1,000 on this trade. Wow, I'd love to get in on this. Technical insights that really look good to me. Here we go, we're live. Hello, guys. Welcome back to another show. Thank you very much for being here. Happy Monday to you. The markets are back open and stuff is moving already. We started out with a really quick start to the week and I'm going to cover all of that stuff. As you guys know, if you're just tuning in for the first time, Monday through Friday, we go live. We talk about markets. We cover everything from, well, mostly just Forex, but we cover anything from the US dollar to gold. Uh, sometimes we get into the US indices and all over the place. So today, we are going to be talking about mostly what's going on with this US dollar move uh, that we covered last week, which is still moving quite a bit. There's a lot to talk about today. So I'm going to get right into it. Thank you very much for showing up. I see Theo in the chat. I say three, uh, I see uh, three days notice. Uh, Dennis, Theo, LB, uh, uh, Giddis, AB, Imperial Shine, Joseph. Shout out to all my friends in the chat who are here uh, early on in the stream. Always good to, to see the people who are here right on the start. So thank you very much for being here. Um, yeah, we got some things to look at today. We got lots of movement going on to start out the week. I do want to cover also uh, just what's going on with this stock market move. So the actual S&P 500 really quick. Check this out. So the S&P 500 uh, looking like it wants to try and rebound here this week. This is going to be the question. Uh, we saw some sell pressure coming in on the U.S. stock market uh, in the last week as sort of a response to everything going on with the Fed. Now, when the Fed talks and they talk about raising interest rates, it's not just the U.S. dollar that is impacted. You're talking about the stock market, currency market, and the bond market heavily, heavily impacted by those actions by the Fed. Now, if stocks rally here for the rest of the day as a rebound, uh, you know, then then maybe the market will perceive those uh, Fed interest rate hikes as not like a ginormous, um, you know, downward spiral for the stock market. But I would say that one thing to watch for when it comes to the S and P five hundred is if you're trading these indices watch for the way price rebounds or does not uh, on a pullback like this. Because when you get something like this, when you get a couple days of sell pressure, the question is, is it going to find support fairly quickly and just keep rallying? Or is it going to really take a tumble? Now, I think the reason that I say that is that if you do see something that's just a quick retracement here, this may just be a very quick blip to the downside for stocks or for just the US indices in general. So keep an eye on that because if this thing rallies, you know, you could be looking at that trade set up by the end of the week. So just something to think about if you're looking at the, the S&P 500 or if you're looking at US 30, things like that. I guess we could just take a quick look at US 30 just for fun. This one took a real beating last week. Uh, you can actually see, let's, let's clear this and start a little fresh here. So US 30, for my friends who trade it, this thing is not for the the uh, the weak. It is a very, very volatile uh, market to be trading. But US 30 is essentially the Dow. It is the top 30 US companies and it can get really volatile. So uh, especially if you're trading it on margin. So here we are on the US 30. The question is right here, is this the bottom? And it does look like it's trying to be. If we see this thing in the day up like dramatically, we could be headed right back to the top of this range. Uh, again, those concerns around inflation, those concerns around um, you know, any sort of uh, Fed interest rate hikes, those are the things that are in front and center for the stock market as well as other markets like the currency market, bond market, et cetera. What do you guys want to look at in the chat? Let me know. Um, what do you guys want to see the most? I'll try and do some coverage of a couple different things here. Uh, I'm going to, I've got a couple things that I definitely want to pull up myself, but I just want to see what uh, you guys have to see or what, what you guys are looking at. Uh, anybody got trades on gold or the US dollar today? We will definitely be taking a look at those things. I guess one thing we could definitely talk about before while you guys put in your, your things there is, you know, what's the US dollar doing today? Because the US dollar was front and center uh, yesterday. <laughs> Grown man says anything not USD pair. I know you're probably, you guys are probably very used to me talking about US dollar currency crosses right now. Um, pound yen is actually a good one though. We will take a look at pound yen for sure. Uh, but we are going to do some dollar, uh, some dollar crosses for sure. We got to talk about everything going on with this US dollar move because again, this was off the backs of the Fed uh, talking about everything going on last week. 
And it's a huge deal for the overall currency market because you're not just seeing, actually, you're not just seeing the US dollar mark, uh, US, US dollar respond to that. You're actually seeing it in a lot of currencies. A lot of um, you know, other economies, uh, they watch very closely what the US dollar is doing because the US dollar is such a pace setter for global economy in the sense that, you know, a lot of countries trade with the US, a lot of countries do business with the US. So uh, if the US is looking like it's in bad shape, a lot of times we see other parts of the world follow close behind. So again, uh, the, the US dollar is a very, very impactful thing. I think if you're trading the currency market, some people like to just completely avoid trading the US dollar. But honestly, if you're trading the currency market, not trading the US dollar is like if you were trading stocks without looking at the overall indices, right? You're ignoring the big picture stuff that's going on. So again, when we look at the US dollar today, you can see we had three massive bars to the upside last week to end out strong. We're seeing a little bit of a retracement today. And the question is, where would this thing actually pull back to if it got sell heavy? Well, one thing to watch for would be, of course, can this 91.4 level get retested? And now let's just assume for a second here that this is the top. If we draw the bottom to the top here on the US, uh, or the, sorry, the US dollar, right? The US dollar index. If we're drawing that in, we're saying, okay, there's the top, there's the bottom. If we assume this is the top, because we don't know this is the top, but I'm just drawing it as in, in terms of like a fib just to, to get the idea. If this is the top and what would confirm that would probably be if it's, if it's, you know, pushing lower and we break through yesterday's low, something like that, right? Just as an idea. Uh, the idea though, is that if price does pull back, you've got this level at the 38.2, which seems far away. But again, this thing, when it gets volatile, it really can move. Uh, you know, you may see a, a pullback this week. Like if the US dollar gets bearish for this week and we get a pullback, I would probably be looking to buy some of the US dollar crosses somewhere on a pullback there. So something to look out for, for sure. Uh, what that would probably mean is a, a bounce for gold as well, a, a bounce for a lot of these other crosses against the US dollar. So keep an eye on those. That's again, that's a big if. The question is, can the market actually pull back to that 38.2 this week? And that's going to really rely on, um, you know, some of the, maybe the downplaying of the, of the US dollar this week. Maybe it's, you know, maybe some, some bigger problems surface, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, uh, I do want to pause and say, as we've got 440 people in here, uh, I just want to let you guys know that obviously this, this stream and this content that we put out, I'm in an office right now. I have a team of people behind me that make this possible. It is not something that we are able to do completely for free just because it costs us money to operate. And thanks to our sponsor today, which is tradingview.com. They allow us to keep the lights on. They allow us to do what we do, which is talk markets, share insights, share coverage. We've got you know people behind the scenes that work very hard to give you guys free stuff here on YouTube. Uh, so big shout out to our sponsor there at the top of the screen, tradingview.com. If you like my charts, if you're a newer trader and you're looking for a better charting software, don't just chart on your phone. It's a really, in my opinion, it's a really tough way to trade just looking at your phone only. Uh, so again, I really love the desktop view on tradingview.com. It allows me to make my charts look really good. And I highly encourage you to check them out. Again, Big thank you to them for helping us stay on the air. If you guys are enjoying the content, by the way, do me a big favor, smash that like button, subscribe down below so that you can come back and do more content with us in the future. Hang out and uh, talk markets with us again. We've got uh, content coming out Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. So you can tune in again. Okay, so uh, let's see what else we can get into. So that's the US dollar pulling back a little bit today. Uh, I will do GBP JPY just because that one was also interesting. This thing is absolutely bouncing off that 61.8 so nicely. Uh, you can see the bottom has been formed at least for now on some of these JPY crosses. Uh, we will see if that can continue. Again, the yen came out very, very strong towards the end of last week and even into Monday uh, or, or Sunday, I guess, for me, Monday for some of the other people out there. Uh, started out very, very strong for the yen. And now we're seeing a bit of a bounce, finding some value there at the 61.8. Now I did not take this trade, uh, would have been nice, but again, uh, the yen sort of weakening here a little bit on the day. So we will see if that can persist. If that does hold, you know, you're looking at, you might have a little bit of resistance here at the 38 point, you know, 
well, I guess wherever this 38.2 level is, which is 153.43. So, you know, as price does shoot up, if it's able to get up into this zone, um, you know, that sort of seems like a, a barrier just because you've got previous levels there that seem significant. If that can break above, you're looking at more upside, in my opinion, for the pound yen. Now, please remember, this is not financial advice. Uh, I am not, you know, a financial advisor. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your money. I'm just sharing my thoughts and opinions. Uh, but I always have to say that for the new traders out there who, you know, they, they hear someone on YouTube talking about, oh, the pound yen might go higher. And then they go like, bet their life savings on something. Please don't do that. I'm just here to tell you my opinions and analysis. And I really encourage you, if you're going to be trading, trade with a proper risk management plan and a trading plan in general. A lot of traders out there, you would not imagine how many of them have no plan, no strategy. They just sort of go with the wind on some of these trades. And that's a very, very dangerous approach to markets. So when I look at pound yen, this thing is very bullish to me on the higher timeframes and now looking a little bit better on the lower time frames. Let's take a look at the one hour chart here on the uh, pound yen. You can see price forming this low, coming in pretty hot here. We did break out of this little zone right here, which is kind of a key spot. You know, you had these uh, sort of stair stepping downs where you had lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and now bam, looking like we're trying to form a higher high. Let's see if we can break through this today. If that keeps going, that would be really awesome for pound yen. I think you could get some good trade setups, both intraday and swing trading based uh, off of that move there, should that occur. I really like pound yen on the long side personally, so I will be watching that currency pair this week for sure. Um, with that said, what else can we take a look at? Let's take a look at Euro USD. How's this one holding up? Uh, Euro USD looking like it may have found a short term bottom here, uh, looking like it's bouncing off 1.185. Five, five, let's say, uh, right around this zone. Uh, I guess we could mark it up right here just as a, a temporary level. We will see if it can hold that. If it breaks, of course, uh, I think you're probably headed down to that low of 1.175 that we discussed on the Sunday special video. If you guys watch the Sunday videos, uh, you'll know that I talked about EURUSD and I talked about this idea here. Uh, should price get you know underneath this level? I think you're probably going to see price do one of these. We will see what occurs there. But again, the euro looking very weak across uh, against the dollar for me right now. This is not something I'm rushing to go buy. Uh, and honestly, with the US dollar so strong, there's not a lot of things that I'm looking to oppose the dollar with right now until, you know, until something changes. Um, so Euro USD on the daily chart here. What about the four hour? We'll take a lower time frame approach, see what's going on with this one. So it does seem like we've formed a bottom, at least for now. You can see right here, we sort of rounded out. We made a couple of lows and then popped off the bottom there. Kind of nice. Question is, can we break above you know, this sort of high of day? Can we get somewhere above there and keep going? And if so, is it going to rebound all the way to that 1.2 level? I think a magnet for price is this big old psychological level at 1.2. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that concept of a, uh, of a what do you call it, a psychological level. Uh, look at this. Look at this scammer in the chat. That's not us. We don't do that sort of thing. Just so you guys know, let me block that person. Uh, I'm sorry that that person is hurting and, uh, starving, but, uh, you know, whatever your reasons are for scamming, it's not cool. It's, uh, you're hurting other people to try and try and save yourself. Um, please don't do that. Please don't fall for scams. Always avoid those people, report them right away. We don't ever ask you guys to send us, you know, money for some sort of scam like that. That's just very, very sketchy. And they're all over the social medias out there. So please be careful. Um, we've done our best to battle them. It's, it's an endless battle, but we, uh, we will prevail. Um, so yeah, so Euro USD, I think a break off of the lows here, if we can get something like a high of day break, that could be, you know, we could see further retracement. I, again, I think that the US dollar is probably due for a retracement. I'm still bullish on it overall right now, but I think that it has the potential to, you know, uh, have a retracement, see the Euro USD, maybe retest some of those levels that we broke clean through. A lot of times what you get in markets is when you get something like this with a four hour view on the uh, Euro USD, when you get something like this, where it's just massive selling without much pause. A lot of times you see the market do something like this. You see a weak retracement. You see something to at least, you know, confirm that these are real, you know, strong sellers that will sell anything and not just a blip. Because sometimes you guys may have seen this too. Sometimes in markets you get something like this and then you get something like this right away, right? And that is an interesting perspective as well because then it shows like, I would say that a healthy downtrend looks like this, right? 
I guess probably most people would say that. Uh, a healthy downtrend does not just look like this because then, you know, you can have these, you know, sharp V movements right back up. And so that is something to think about with the Euro USD is we probably want to see if you're going to be short selling the Euro USD, if you're going to be looking for bullish setups on the dollar, we probably want to see pullbacks that actually hold nicely for sellers and show that there is a true, genuine, uh, supply up in these zones. So that's one thing to watch out for Euro USD. If we get the retracement this week, maybe a move back to 1.2, I could see myself looking at shorts in that zone. Let's look at pound dollar here. We'll take a look at GBP USD today. Uh, similar concept to uh, the Euro dollar. Let's look at the daily chart here. So again, I'm not super willing to short the the pound. Um, they have actually talked in a similar way to, to how the Fed has been you know, pressured to talk about raising rates. The UK is sort of in the same boat. They've been really, really seeing some good inflation numbers or high inflation numbers, uh, which may pressure the Bank of England to talk about raising rates. As we know and saw last week, raising rates means usually that currency gets pumped to the moon. So we saw the US dollar go absolutely bananas last week. Is the pound next? I don't know. We'll see. I think they have something about that this week. Do they have monetary policy? Let's look. We'll take a look at forexfactory.com. Actually, I think, uh, let's see. Do they have anything on that? Um, I think that the UK government single it would uh, restriction on overseas travel, uh, yeah, investors, Bank of England. Okay. Inve investors now await the Bank of England's monetary policy meeting later this week at which officials are set to remain divided over whether to halt the government bond purchase program after inflation hit its highest in nearly two years. So this is the thing, right? So this is the rumor. This is the idea. Same thing with the US dollar. So this is why I'm also bullish on the pound, uh, at least for now. I can be completely wrong about this, but the idea here is that they're seeing high inflation numbers. They're seeing the things that uh, generally trigger central banks to consider raising rates or talking about uh, slowing the bond purchases. And those things are incredibly bullish for a currency should they occur. So maybe some of those pound crosses, things like pound yen, especially pound Swiss, pound, you know, uh, maybe pound dollar, those things could get a bid should we see uh, some positive news out of the central bank or the Bank of England. Um, so some things to watch out for, for sure. I think that with the current situation, though, I'm not really willing to trade this thing against the pound dollar. If you are looking to short or buy the pound, you know, I think the two levels that I'm most interested from a technical perspective would be that 1.4 retracement, similar to the Euro USD at 1.2, you know, should price retrace back up to that point. Could be an interesting perspective there uh, to look for continued downside down to here, which also sort of happens to be uh, a major area of support as well. Now, we haven't tested that, but I would imagine there's probably a lot of buyers who are probably willing to try at 1.37 to hold the pound dollars overall upward trend. Let's just apply a moving average here. I'm just curious what the MAs look like here. So you've got this like just from a, a just a technical perspective, a beautiful uptrend overall for the pound dollar. And there very well may be some great opportunities to go long on the pound dollar if you think that the pound uh, is going higher. Now, however, like I said, I think that there are easier trades than just buying pound dollar. I think that there are things that I would like to trade more than pound dollar, like pound yen, pound Swiss, like I said, some of the other ones out there. Um, but again, that is uh, that is just my take. Please remember, you don't have to trade exactly what I do. I'm not always right. In fact, uh, if you recently, my trades have been not so good. So I'm looking for opportunities on the dollar. I'm being patient here to try and see if we can catch something good. Uh, and then I'm going to look to try and actually execute. If I do take any trades, you guys will, of course, hear about them inside of the private Discord. If you are in it, the Discord is something that we offer for our private members. It is not a free service, but I think that if you're a serious trader and you're willing to, to join a community, that is full of serious traders. It's the best place to be. Uh, we've made it as affordable as possible and you get as much value as you possibly can. Um, if you're not already in the private discord, like I said, all of my trades are shared there. You also get access to our chat room, which is full of realistic traders. You've got trade ideas being shared, research from our team being shared, live coaching webinars, which are available so that people can ask questions and get, get some help there on some concepts. Um, so all of that stuff is available inside of our private discord. If you are not already in it, there's a link down below in the description. I highly encourage you, if you are just losing money in the markets, pause from losing money, take one month, you know, sign up for one month of membership with us, try it out, get as much value as you can. It's probably going to be a better thing than just trading blindly in the market and losing money, right? If you took that same money and you just 
paid for a membership where you could actually learn some things, talk with some realistic people, and maybe even connect with some, some, some mentors or people that would be really helpful, I think it would be worth considering. So check it out down below in the description. I say that genuinely because when I was a newer trader, I was just trading blindly and I was losing way more money than I ever you know should have just because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't have any sort of guidance or, or you know anything to go off of. So again, check it out down below in the description. Uh, sign up with us, come join the crew, and uh, hopefully we'll see some of you guys in there. And shout out to my friends already in there hanging out. Uh, Grown Man Gamer says, best community for traders. Thanks, man. Appreciate that and glad that you're there. Jose, it's uh, $50 for a month, but if you use the promo code there, I think it's 45. So try it out for a month. I'm telling you, I think uh, just try it. If you like it, stick around. If you don't, all good. Uh, either ways, I think I, I think it's very, very worth the value. Let's keep looking. We'll look at some other things. Uh, so that is pound dollar. We took a look at the Euro USD. Let's take a look at gold now, you guys. We'll take a look at XAU USD here. Looking like it's given a try here at 61.8. And this is the question of the day when it comes to gold. Is it going to hold this 61.8? Is it going to confirm sort of a low here? And are we going to see a bullish retracement this week for gold? Uh, or is it going to just knock that 61.8 out? Because I think there's one scenario that I think is pretty scary for gold bulls, which is this idea here. So let me full screen. So the idea here that I think is most scary for bulls is that if price is able to break that 61.8 level, there's really not a lot going for gold here. I think like from there, from a technical view, you're looking at moves most likely down to 1700 or even below. So if that can break that to the downside, if you're if you're a seller, then you know maybe that's a, a great thing for you. But if you're a buyer, I would just be cautious because I think that this 61.8 level uh, is sort of like a line in the sand for bulls. At least my view is, you know, you're looking at this thing, and if this thing can't hold this low. That's pretty scary for gold because you're talking about it. You're talking about gold. Uh, by the way, can we get some hashtag gold gangs in the chat? Uh, hashtag gold gang from grown man gamer. And to all of you guys out in the chat, drop your hashtag gold gangs. If you're, if you're a gold trader, some of you guys like gold, some of you don't, but it seems like overall it's a, it's a crowd favorite. So. Uh, definitely will join after the stream. Guide is awesome. Glad to uh, to have you there. There's a promo code there for you on Facebook uh, to use to sign up. So definitely uh, glad to see some of you guys joining us. But anyways, with that, gold at the 61.8, big, big thing here. Look at that, all the gold gangs coming in. I think it's kind of like a line in the sand because you're talking about, uh, you're talking about something that has been buying every dip aggressively for the last month and then just poof, all the buyers disappeared. So it was like, okay, every single time this thing would rally, it would have a shallow retracement met by a lot of buyers. Shallow retracement, a lot of buyers. Shallow retracement, huge buyers, right? Some, some buyers here, and then it just fell apart. And all the buyers that were over here seem to have just dried up. In fact, real quick, you guys, well, let's go look at the COT reports for gold because I am very curious. I have not checked this. Um, let's go look at this. So I'm going to go to the website. And I'm going to go to COT data right here. You guys feel free to use this anytime you want. I'll drop it in the chat for anybody who wants to, to bookmark this page. Uh, it is a1trading.com. Let me see if I can pull that up on the screen. So check it out, a1trading.com. This is our website. There it is popped up on the screen. Perfect. Uh, so a1trading.com, come here anytime you want to use our tools, read up on what we've got going on in the markets. Uh, we've got some, some good stuff there going out uh, each day, each week. Uh, we've got a couple different writers putting out articles and content. You can join our Telegram, all sorts of stuff. If you want more information about that community, you can check it out right here. And of course, we can go over here to do the COT data. So check it out. Let's look at what the COT has to tell us about the gold market. I'm actually very, very curious because I haven't looked at this yet. Um, so last week we saw a massive sell-off of gold and you can see it kind of reflected there. There it is on the COT. So they sold a bit of gold here. Uh, so it wasn't like a massive aggressive sell. I thought maybe it would be a, sh a sharper move, maybe something like you know a, a deeper a deeper divot in the chart there. But it seems like as of Tuesday uh, of last week, 
that is the news. So we had some selling going on in gold. Will that continue? Uh, we will see. But again, at least for the for the time being, there's less of this dominating buying going on from institutional traders. Seems like they sort of flattened out and even started to maybe sell a bit of gold after that pop to the upside. So that is the COT data. Let's go over to the chart again. So again, I think that the big thing for bulls here is that are we actually going to hold the 61.8? Because if you caught this, if you caught the 61.8 and it holds, you're talking about some beautiful risk to reward should this thing return to former glory. But I'm going to say that I think it's really, really kind of a, a big if, uh, you know, if price is able to get rallying again, just because, again, you've got now what was such a support heavy, demand heavy market. You know, you've got a lot of areas now where sellers are probably willing to step up and to try and sell gold, right? So all those buyers seem to have dried up. So now as you retrace, the question is, can buyers actually get us past those levels or are we just going to collapse underneath uh, you know, the pressure of, of sellers at these areas? So I am not bullish on gold anymore. I, I talked about that in the Sunday special and I talked about it last week. Uh, I have paused completely on being willing to, to be bullish on gold. I think that you know, with the US dollar being uh, so strong right now, I'm going to wait for that to either calm down or even look to just be long on US dollar crosses uh, until further notice. Now, there's a lot of controversy around the US dollar right now because you've got people who are saying, you know, well, the Fed's got so much debt. They printed so much money. They're not going to be able to, you know, they're going to, the country's going to go under if they're, if they're not able to, um, or if they raise rates, it's going to be terrible for their, for the, for the debt and everything. So, you know, there's a lot of controversy. So maybe the US dollar, again, I'm not a predictor. I just sort of react to what's going on and try and ride the trends. So I don't know what the Fed's next move is. I don't know what the next big claim is. I just know that for now, we have momentum off of the back of that. And I love those sort of trades. I love looking for momentum with the big moves. Um, the Sun, I already took a look at EURUSD and please don't spam the chat. It makes it hard to read everyone's comments. Uh, hi, Nick. Sorry, I'm late. Had a lot to do today. Hi, Eddie. Thanks for being here. It's all good. You're here now. Thanks for being here. Nick, what's your take on Bitcoin? Uh, Bitcoin's getting slaughtered, man. It is really taking a hit. Let's go take a look really quick just for fun. I guess not for fun. Rest in peace to some of my Bitcoin uh, holdings. Look at this, 32,000. Look at that crossing almost back to the 30K. And I think that this is a huge, huge deal for Bitcoin. And honestly, when I'm looking at this thing, as I, I've held Bitcoin for years now, and uh, I don't say I'm not like a Bitcoin millionaire or anything like that, but I've held Bitcoin since uh, I think probably like, I want to say I bought it at like six or seven thousand, and then I bought more at like ten. So I am very up, and I'm very happy with my positions. Uh, but you gotta. So I'll tell you guys. So I had at this point somewhere around twenty five k in Bitcoin, and please remember, I did not put anywhere near twenty five k in. The market just went absolutely crazy, right? And so I didn't sell any of it because I'm kind of just at this point where. Uh, I, I bought so far back and I've just been holding on to it. Uh, it's just one of those things. I've, I've just held on to it and I plan to continue to hold on to it. Maybe it'll go right back down to, to where I bought it at. But for now, it's kind of at this spot where it's at 25K uh, up here. Now I'm down to like, I think like 14K, maybe even less. And by the end of the day, it might be, who, who knows, man, maybe, maybe down to like 10K or something. But it's a volatile market. I, I do believe that the risk to reward on crypto is is there. So, like for me, if I'm looking at this thing, let's say I you know wanted to buy crypto and I and I bought it here. Let's say I bought some at thirty two thousand five hundred. Let's say uh, I went crazy and I bought one coin. Right, I bought thirty two thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. If that was me, it's not. Just telling you, I didn't buy thirty two thousand. But let's say I did. I think that if crypto does work out, you're looking at more, way more gains. You're looking at way more than 100% gains, right? So let's think about this from an investment perspective. I, I know I'm ranting and I'll get back to the currencies in just a moment, but check this out. If I bought Bitcoin right here, the most I can lose on my money because I'm not trading with margin is 100%. If you're trading with margin, you can lose more than 100%. But if I'm just buying the Bitcoin itself, if I just buy one coin at 30,000, let's say, the most I can lose is 100% of that $30,000, which would really suck. But on the flip side, let's say crypto goes crazy and things go really, really well. And we see another, you know, crazy spike to the upside. 
if it reached a hundred thousand, I would have essentially almost tripled my money, right? What's 30 times what's 30 times three? That would be 90K, right? So in that case, I would have tripled my money if it went to, you know, if it, if it tripled. So again, I think the cool thing is that if, if and this is like the case of if crypto stays valid, if, if it's valid, you know, you're talking about huge upside. If it's not valid, if it dies off, if the, if the US, you know, tightened its grip on it and just killed it, you're looking at 100% loss. So again, another scenario where I don't, and this is good for trading too, I don't know what's going to happen and I wouldn't claim to know what's going to happen. I think people that do try and predict and, you know, make giant claims about everything. I think that they're sort of selling you like the idea of something cool. But the reality is like for me, markets are, they're very, you know, they're not predictable. They're not like, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen. It's more like, what's the risk? What's the reward? How do I play this as, as safe as possible to make as much as possible? And crypto has that for me. Crypto has that idea of like worst case scenario, it's not awful if I put a s amount of money that's that's reasonable. And then upside is huge, right? I told you I went up to from like probably 10,000 invested or like five to 10,000 invested up to 25K. So, you know, it just shows you if, if a good run happens, it can be phenomenal for your account. Let's take a look at dollar CAD here. Dollar CAD is going to be our next one. So USD CAD here. Look at this. So it popped past the 61.8 uh, level there, closed above it on Friday, which was a huge deal for the uh, for the sellers because you're talking about a major level of resistance pretty much being defiled, right? Just being taken out by the uh, by the buyers. So buyers stepped in there. And we're able to get above 61.8. That is a huge deal. And honestly, uh, you know, the question is, is it really going to do a full blown move up to something like the 200 day moving average? And I think it's a very natural place, a very natural place for dollar CAD to go, in my opinion, would be a retracement all the way back up to resistance here and even retest that 200 day moving average. The 200 day, there's nothing magical about it, but it does offer a very interesting level of long-term trend. You can see this thing has been significantly under the 200 day moving average, but recently all of this Fed news and stuff going on with the dollar uh, has me thinking that it is very possible for a retest of the 200. Here was during COVID when the massive dollar rise happened against the Canadian. Everyone was selling the CAD. And then when things started to calm down, it was a very natural place to, for price to go all the way down with heavy momentum, right down to the 200 day moving average, found a little bit of support there, finally broke underneath and has been in a downtrend since. So I think a natural place for price to go here would be a retracement all the way to the 200 day moving average. Uh, and I think now, in fact, with the dollar CAD is that if you're bullish on this pair, it's not even the worst idea in my view here. I think it's worth, you know, considering stuff like this, right? Retests and continuations up to that 200 day moving average. Again, you're talking about a market in heavy momentum to the upside here is dollar CAD. So question is, can we get that push right on up to the 200? I think also men uh, worth mentioning is that 100% retracement, which is this level here. Let me clean up my chart here just a bit. We'll change this view around to be, because now this is what was resistance is now support, right? So you've got this level here, all of these levels as demand now, which is just crazy because I took some trades on the short side, uh, you know, on the way down and things were great. And now you can see how quickly once a market really changes directions, that is why I'm so you know willing to, if, if news changes, I'm willing to just bail on a trade idea. I'm not I'm not going to marry myself to this idea that dollar cat is going lower. Which you guys, if you watched me a week or two ago, you would have hear, heard me saying like things like, you know, I think dollar cat is continuing lower, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and I'll be the first one to point myself out and say, yeah, we were wrong about that. Time to look for other opportunities. With everything with the Fed, I'm not super willing to trade dollar CAD just because I am still bullish on the Canadian currency, uh, but I'm also bullish on the US dollar currency. So real quick, if we're looking at something like USD CAD and you've got a country that is talking about raising rates and another country that is talking about raising rates, these are economies that are both doing okay. They're doing well for themselves in the midst of recovery. So I don't really want to trade a strong one versus a weak one. Now, what about something like USD CHF? 
for me right now, this is a currency pair that I'm very willing to go long on if there's a setup because you're talking about a country that is raising rates and talking about tapering and doing all this positive stuff compared to the uh, the Switzerland, right? Which is you know not interested in raising rates anytime soon. They they are not in a position to do that because they want actually a weaker currency. So all of that combined, I would much rather trade something like this. It's kind of like if you're watching, uh, it's like if you're watching a pro sport, think of like whatever your favorite sport is. Let's say, um, I don't know if it's in America, American football, or if you're international uh, soccer slash football. Um, if you're looking at that, right? Think about the best team, and I'm not a good example of this because I don't know many sports teams. I'm kind of not a sportsy person, but let's say you take the very best person or the very best, sorry, the very best team and you put it up against the very worst team. You have a very good chance of uh, of, of winning, right, if you bet on the, the winning team. But the spread and if you're doing sports betting, it reflects that. You're not going to get much if you, if you choose the winning team uh, or the better team. In currencies, the cool thing is you can bet on the winning team against the weak team and it's like the same odds or the same like uh i guess broker whatever spread as betting on a winning team versus a winning team this is one of the coolest things about trading currencies you can bet on strong versus weak and still get the same uh you know sort of exchange does that make sense to any of my friends out there who have ever bet on sports i've bet on sports and you should probably just bet against me the whole time because i don't know what i'm doing but anyways, <laughs> um, I do it every once in a while just for a little bit of fun. But uh, the idea there, dollar CAD coming up here, breaking through the 61.8 and honestly looking pretty bullish from here. Uh, I think it has room to go up to 1.265. But again, just the concept there of, uh, of a broken you know, structure, breakouts to the upside and things looking pretty dang good there for the Canadian currency. I'm sorry, for the, for the US dollar at this time. What about CAD yen? So we will talk about CAD yen. It's another currency pair that I am bullish on. So I like the Canadian. So that's why I'm not really Canadian dollar. That's not why, or that's why I'm not really interested in like going long on dollar CAD because I like the dollar and I like the Canadian dollar. Now, however, when you're looking at something like this, when you're looking at the price pulling back here, right? That was a that was a beautiful buy. I didn't take it. I wish I did. Uh, it's probably like a fifty percent retracement here. So off of the lows to the highs there. Look at that. So it bounced right off that fifty percent retracement, uh, and looks like it has room to go up. So I like CAD yen a lot. I think the yen pairs are a bit overextended, and I definitely think that there is room there for some retracement on the yen, which leads me to believe that I think that things like pound yen, CAD yen, Aussie yen could be due for a bit more of a bounce against the, the yen. Because remember, anytime we are trading currencies, if we're doing CJ, you're talking about betting on the CAD, selling the yen. Or if you're going short, you are betting on the yen, shorting the CAD, right? And in this case, this is not what I'm willing to do right now because again, we're sort of in a overall bullish market environment. Uh, if things change dramatically, then of course I could see myself flipping directions again. But for now, it seems like these pullback opportunities are just that they could be pullback opportunities. So that is that is my bias there. Things like Aussie yen as well, probably getting a real steep discount there off of price. You can see, look at that, holding the lows absolutely gorgeously. Uh, you do have some of these previous levels of, uh, sorry, demand now turning into supply. In fact, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So you do have, of course, the the high there. We'll we'll, pour, uh, we'll partition that out right there. So you've got some highs back from when we were in this choppy range. But I think that, you know, if you're bullish on Aussie yen, there may be some good trade setups. If, for example, let's say price doubles back and, and retests these lows, et cetera, maybe you get a little bit more, uh, you know, you have a chance to, to try and buy some of these crosses if you're if you're bullish on them. Uh, I already mentioned pound yen. Another one we could took a, take a look at is New Zealand yen. So this one, look at this. So New Zealand yen totally break, broke those support levels that I was watching. Uh, I took some trades there. I think they were losses. Actually, they were definitely losses. I took a loss on uh, New Zealand yen as it pulled back. But I think that there is still, you know, I think the overall upward trend is still in uh, still in play. It is just a question of, you know, is there a setup that gets you a decent risk reward? That's the thing. I think like so many people get so caught up in markets about being absolutely right about direction. And they're never willing to just say, okay, well, maybe I was wrong about the entry 
and I can still look for another opportunity to go long, right? So I'll give you a quick example. Let's say, for example, that I went long on New Zealand yen, which I did, and I think I got stopped out on the way down. And let's say I'm still bullish on the, the New Zealand yen, but there's no problem in taking a small loss, controlled loss, and then when price keeps going lower, if it sets up again, maybe you're willing to take the setup again at a better entry price. Maybe try again. Maybe maybe it works that time. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you take a couple losses in a row. But the point is, you know, there's no harm in if things didn't work out on one single trade. Don't go crying to your mom. Just just reset. Think about it. You know configure yourself for the next setup and just don't get overly emotionally attached to a single trade. Um, at least that's, that's the idea. It's definitely easier said than done. I understand emotions and trading, man, they are tough and I don't care. I've been doing this for what, five years now, still some struggle there, still some times where I'm like, oh, this is so like frustrating. I wish I could catch a bigger winner than this. I'll get stopped out for break even on a trade that I didn't want to. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't matter how long you do this. The emotions are still there. It's just that you get better at actually like controlling your actions. I think so many people talk about like, I don't know, has anybody ever heard that phrase like, oh, trade like a robot? I don't like that phrase. And the reason I don't like that phrase is because we aren't robots. We're human beings and money means something to all of us because money means food on the table for your family. It means uh, being able to, to, go on a vacation with your family. It means being able to go out with friends. Money has meaning to all of us. And to say, you know, just, oh, turn off your emotions. That's, that's easy. It's not easy. However, what is something that I think you can work on is even if you are emotionally distraught about something, you can figure out how to master your actions. Your actions are more important in my opinion. So like, let's say that you're, you're saying, um, you're, you're looking at New Zealand again, you took a loss and you took another loss and now you're frustrated and you're like, uh, I got to make money on this thing and you're getting all frustrated with it. You can still be sort of frustrated, but your action could be, okay, I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to come back tomorrow. I can't, I can't trade logically right now because I'm so upset, right? If that's you, it, it's okay to acknowledge I'm upset by this. It's frustrating me. I need to stop. And then maybe your next action is like, may, maybe for you, that means I need to, to walk away for, for a day. Maybe it means uh, you need to walk away for a few hours. Maybe you have a limit on the number of trades that you can take per day. That's a huge one for, for a lot of people is like, if you take two losses in a day, you're done for the day. You're not doing anything. Those things are important. So Dade says uh, he loves my rants. Dade, thank you very much, man. I'm, I'm glad that you like them. Sometimes I like realize that I've been just talking for a while and then I like sort of freak out because I'm like, I'm probably boring the heck out of people. But these are honestly things, you guys, that um, they they matter. They're very, very important stuff to, to consider and to take seriously as the emotional side of trading is no joke. Um, what else do you guys want to look at? Comment in the chat really quick. What do you guys want to pull up next? I'll, I'll pull up some charts from you. Uh, we looked at a bunch already. These yen currency crosses are really bouncing. Someone said pound yen is rallying. Let's see. Look at that. Pound yen holding the lows very nicely there and retesting that spot that we talked about. Is it going to get above 153.25 today? That is the question. What do you guys think in the chat? Euro New Zealand. Ivan says he wants to see me dance. Oh, I, I got a video for you. You want to see me dance, Ivan? I've danced before on camera. Have you ever seen my video? Hold on. Um, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Ivan, I got one for you, man. Can you guys click that link? You should be able to. Save that link off. Maybe open it in another tab if you want to see me dance, but um, there you go. Okay, so lots of different charts. S&P 500, we already took a look at the S&P. Uh, Euro New Zealand, sure. Uh, Marnia, we, we already took a look at gold, but we will take a look at Euro New Zealand. What is this one doing? Okay, so Euro New Zealand, look at this Look at this guy going, going ham today, breaking through major resistance. That is a big deal. Euro New Zealand looking super strong as of last week. And um, let me show you guys something off of this. So Euro New Zealand, I took some really, really bad 
uh, or not bad, but I had a losing streak like crazy on Euro Aussie, which moves a lot like Euro New Zealand uh, af- during the pandemic. I was bearish on this thing and it just did not want to quit. So I was stubborn. I was stupid. And I took a couple extra trades that I should have on Euro New Zealand during all that time. Um, I ended up being fine and I actually even made some some profit out of it. But uh, it is one of those things. I learned some serious lessons on those two currency pairs, Euro New Zealand, Euro Aussie. They're always a reminder to me that you have to be you have to be disciplined in this stuff, or you are almost certainly going to, you know, get yourself in a lot of trouble. But here's the thing: Euro New Zealand daily chart flying up, breaking through resistance and breaking through the 200-day moving average, and actually even retesting it on the lower time frames today. So check this out. Uh, we saw it break through the 200 and now it retested it. And now the question is, is it just going to bounce off that and keep going higher for the next few days? Looks like it could. Uh, you've got this level here that was a major area for, for sellers. And then it actually held as a massive launch pad for buyers. So as we look at Euro New Zealand here going into this week, the question is, can it stay above this for the whole week? If it does retrace, is it going to hold this and continue higher? I think it is a natural place for, I think the path of least resistance for Euro New Zealand does seem to be a flip to the upside. You can actually see probably the moving averages. Yeah, you got the 50 crossing back over. The 100 is still bearish, but you can see what was just a dominant downtrend seems to be becoming a bit more confused here with everything going on. So very, very interesting to see that. So Euro New Zealand, I would say, if anything, this one looks pretty bullish for the time being. So uh, again, very, very interested to see. Let's look at the retail sentiment on that one. What does that look like? We'll head over to the website, a1trading.com. As you guys know, you can use this anytime you want for free. I'm going to go over to the, let me show you where you can get this. So if you go to a1trading.com, the website, and then you just go over to the retail sentiment right here, click on that. And then let's look at what the retail crowd thinks about Euro New Zealand. Um, So here's Euro New Zealand. It seems like 60% are short, while a nice 39% of traders are long. So not a massive differential here. What about the Euro Aussie? Because they they trade very similarly usually. Euro Aussie, a little bit more interesting at 73% short with 26% long. Big deal there because again, you've got the retail crowd piling into one side of the trade. I usually like those scenarios to go against retail. And it's not that I'm like a, a mean or not trying to be a mean person. It's just that a lot of times we know the retail crowd, they're usually on the wrong side of moves. So if we know Euro Aussie is being heavily shorted, looking for long setups on, on these two currency pairs could be interesting. So staying back on Euro New Zealand here, um, you know, retracements to me look interesting for, for potential long side action current, uh, or, or higher prices on Euro New Zealand makes sense to me. So we'll see again, uh, what, what actually plays out. If I do take any trades, of course, you guys will hear about them inside of the private discord. For those of you who did not hear me earlier, we are doing a sale on the private discord right now. You can join into our membership. You get access to our chat rooms, all of the trades that I take, my alerts and reasoning behind every trade, et cetera, uh, trade ideas, all, all you know, sorts of good stuff. If you're not already familiar with it or you haven't heard of it before, there's a link at the top of the description for you to check it out and to join us there. Um, again, we do live coaching webinars, all sorts of stuff, sort of a step ahead of, of what you get on YouTube here. So if you enjoy the YouTube content, by all means, I'm glad that you're here and enjoying the free content. But if you are interested, of course, it is completely optional. If you'd like to join us inside of the paid group, it is something that I think is is next level for people who are very serious about this stuff and looking to, to get some more, uh, you know, surround themselves with more traders, look for more, uh, you know, helpful tips and tricks and things that could take them, like I said, to that next level. With that said, you guys, I'm going to wrap up the stream. I appreciate everyone being here. Uh, We hit like almost 700 people hanging out in the chat. So always a pleasure to be here with you guys. And I hope you have some happy, healthy, safe trading out there. Please be careful. Lots of volatility going on. And uh, we will see you back in the next one. I know you were expecting Nick, but my name's Julie and I do the real work around here. I wanted to take a second to thank you guys for watching the show and tell you more about some free content that we offer. One of the things that we offer is a free email newsletter. So if you click the link down below, you can sign up for free market analysis, trading tips, and exclusive offers. Every once in a while, someone here at A1 Trading takes a crazy trade and you'll be the first one to know about it. See you guys next time.